Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today for the final webinar in our winter series titled Get Ready for Spring with Judy Sharpton. My name is Jessica DeGraff, and I, along with my counterpart, Megan Owens, work to support our IGC customers with programs, marketing, and tools to help you, our customer, to be successful. Before we get started today, we wanted to share just a few housekeeping items with you. First off, all attendees will be in listen-only mode. And while you can't talk, we absolutely love your participation. You can communicate with us via the chat button or via the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. To get you started though, let us know where you're logging in from, whether it's in the US or in Canada, we would love to hear where you're at and what temperature it is by you. Uh, lastly, Megan is going to be monitoring questions throughout the webinar and we'll be sharing these with Judy. Uh, we'll also have a larger Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So if you have questions, please type those into the chat. We'll compile all of those. And Judy is really excited to walk through your questions, uh, not only within the presentation, but at the end as well. This webinar is being recorded. So you'll be able to access a recording of this webinar at the end of this week. And we also wanted to mention that all of our webinars in the IGC series are available on our website. And there's a link on your screen. Well, our panelist needs very little introduction. Judy Sharpton, or as some call her, the woman with the hat, has been a highly regarded consultant to our industry for well over 20 years. The owner of Growing Places Marketing, Judy specializes in garden center design, renovation, and branding programs exclusively for IGCs and farm markets, with a special focus on small and medium-sized market stores. Today, Judy's going to be sharing three small modifications that you can make to your store in the next four weeks to maximize your sales in 2021. So without further ado, Judy. Judy, I think you're muted still. Unmute. There we go. Um, I was just looking, somebody didn't turn their microphone on. It happens all the time. Um, just as uh, I was looking at the temperatures coming up. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Jess. Uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about uh, some basics of store design today. Um, uh, many of them I've been talking about for years. Hey, Louise. Um, so it's nice to have uh, it's nice to have the familiar faces in the room and, and familiar names in the room. So nice to see you all. Um, I, we just said we were going to hit on three things. I, I expanded the three things, as you know, into more than that. So we're going to try to cover a lot, literally cover a lot of ground today. So let's let, so let's get moving and uh, be sure and send your questions because you know I like to be stumped. I always like to do that. Let's start with with what the customer wants. Uh, not what we sell to them, but what does the customer want from us? And we've talked about this for a number of years. I believe the, cus the, the consumer, uh, that consumers want gardens, not just plants. I think they come looking for gardens. That's one of the reasons why the Gardener's Idea book has been so successful. Um, it gives people ways to look for gardens and then to come and say, I want that. Sometimes it's uh, not exactly what we can provide them, but, but we've got all kinds of alternatives now that we didn't used to have. So if a consumer wants a garden, not just a plant, my challenge to you is to use your store to make that happen. How do you create a way in the store that the customer can come in contact with all of the options that you offer for a garden? So we're gonna try to do that today. And as all of you know, I always start with a site plan. So let's take a look at where that where that gets to with us when we get to uh, when we get to the to that site plan. Um, this is a typical client drawing. I don't usually get something that comes from an architect or an engineer or a. Uh, this was drawn by the by the customer. Now, what they've done here is they put in the measurements. They've used some. They've used some uh, some graph paper and they put in some measurements. Uh, the little blue crosses are the post in the in the in the in the facility. This is a hoop house. It's 96 by 100. No, it's 96 by 126 feet. I bet you there's some of you out there going, yeah, that's about what size mine is. So the challenge here, and Jessica and I worked with this uh, client together, but the challenge here is that they wanted to develop a part of this space and they didn't know exactly how much and they didn't know exactly, but they wanted to develop a part of this space as retail. 
So I took their drawing, the one that they sent me via email, and we put some uh, we put some measurements. We added some measurements to it. Uh, we got it to a scale. It's actually a one to ten scale, so that we could look at the whole area. And then we began working on what to do to this space. Now you can see there. Uh, you can see pretty much where the little where all the little proven winners flowers are. That's my retail space. We left additional space to big sp one big space over to the left of your screen there. Uh, all of this is production. Now, it doesn't mean that they might not want to expand into that. So we didn't want to do anything that would prevent them from expanding into that. But we thought this is what could happen on their budget. Now, Several of the items on, on this drawing are things that I have added to try to illustrate to you what, uh, what these folks wanted to do, but, but these are the basics. So if we start with a basic drawing like this, then we can see the philosophy is, where do you want the customer to go? Now, originally, this is the door. We didn't move it because it was in the right place. It isn't always, but this door is in exactly the right place. Much better to have a door to one side or the other than to have it in the center but this door is in exactly the right place. There is always already a walkway here and here, five foot walkway. So the first thing I asked them to do was put in some concrete. And you can see here that this is the basis for what I'm asking them to do to create retail because the concrete gives you the options. And you don't have to pour the whole greenhouse full of concrete in order to make some concrete work for you. You just need to decide where you need it the most. So this concrete that you just saw in that uh, drawing there, this concrete uh, at approximately four to eight dollars a square foot, six inches deep, it might not have to be that, that's between 12 and 24 thousand dollars. That's the big ticket item. But if Jessica will pop back just one more time, let's take a look no, back one more time. You see, we did not try to put down all our money into concrete. We started with what we thought we could use. We can go back next year if we have a successful season and maybe we add some more concrete here or maybe we add some more here, but we've got all kinds of options for that concrete. So let's see what it looks like when you do that. That's what concrete looks like. Oh my goodness, isn't that pretty? it just makes you so happy because it's clean and you can sweep it and you can wipe it and you can do all kinds of great things to it to make it look good and you can organize your uh, your aisle uh, this one is designed perfectly this aisle is exactly what it's supposed to do it leads me to that door and that door leads me to the, the greenhouse and the outside shopping area and i want you to notice uh, the shelves on the right are angled toward me as I start into the shopping area. The shelves on the left are angled toward me as I come back. So this is the entrance and the exit to this store. So I get the customer to walk through all of this product from the entrance to the store all the way into the greenhouse where the plants are. And then they come right back here to this spot, right, right in here. I'm gonna show it to you uh, in, in a few minutes. They come right back to that spot to check out. So. That's what concrete does for you. And I recommend that you put down as much as you can. So let's start now with what we want to do. If you notice there, my item number one on my uh, runway, which is what, uh, what many retailers call this, item number one on my runway is called an entrance slowdown. It's not particularly a shopping area. It's a place where you want the customer to walk through the door and go, oh, look at that and be happy that they've come to your store. Now you'll notice in this photograph, the, uh, the slowdown wall is on the left. You can see the cash register right there in the corner, but the slowdown wall is across from the register. And how do you know where you want the register to be? Well, you wanna put the, the enticement wall and then I'll show you carts where you want the customer to go. So in this case, this store wants the customer to, to come through here stop and look at this and then keep going in that direction and then come back to here to check out. So uh, once again, we've got the entrance and the cash wrap in the same spot so the customer can come in, look at the wow stuff and then go find lots more of this product throughout the greenhouse area. And you can see the exterior shopping areas and the other, uh, the other greenhouses back there in the background. So let's go to number two. 
if you don't have enough carts, spend your money on carts. Now, let's remember, carts work better if we've got concrete. I'm going to sound like a broke record about concrete. But carts give us a way to direct the customer through the store. Notice in this situation, look at all those pretty bricks and concrete. I can just push my cart over it. Oh, my goodness. I can just chop and chop and chop and chop. Now, the customer wants to be able to find the carts. I fought with a lot of people who want to put carts in the, in the parking lot. Now, just as soon as the grocery store start putting carts in the parking lot, so you pick them up there, you don't. You leave them there, somebody brings them back in, and you get the cart after you come inside the store. If you have customers coming to you saying, do you have carts? That means they walked past them and didn't see them. So, um, and I also wanted to show you this beautiful piece of work that this garden center did to connect these two old greenhouses. Isn't that thing pretty? Um, so that's what the carts do for you, is they, they direct the customer that you want them to see them, and if you don't have enough, then you need some for spring. And that, again, that's an easy item to do something about. You'll notice I'm advocating push carts and not pull carts, but you need concrete. Oh, I'm not gonna mention that again. Okay, let's look at number three. What are we looking at here? Number three is at the rear of the store. Pay no attention to that thing on the right there that says environmental setting. I'll come back to that in just a minute. But on the uh, at the back of the store, we, what we put in here is we put in some, some hay racks on slat walls so that you, we can use some vertical space. Now, this is what, how you sell planters, is you show them to the customer. Remember, the one reason to have a store is customer merchandise contact. So I can see the merchandise, I can touch it, I can put my hands on it, I can easily uh, shop it. And this is one of those areas where vertical display will sell this product if you show it to the customer. But slat wall or store wall, which is a, a, another kind of product that you can, you can purchase, but slat wall and store wall gives you that option. Now, want to display tools? This is inside a greenhouse. This is constructed around two posts in a traditional greenhouse. So what we have is we have an aisle off there to the right, and then this section here between the two posts and the greenhouse, this slat wall has been, uh, has been put in there. I wanna show you how versatile this is. It doesn't have to be just one thing. So let's see how, how you can use this slat wall. Great place to put anything you need to hang up. This is basically the same configuration. It's just that it's being used for a different purpose. And this store has kept their main aisle open and then they've installed this vertical space in there. If you have X bracing, perfect place to build something like this because uh, with X bracing, you can, you can build the structures right around it and have ways to show off. Let's see what else we can do with slat wall. Now slat wall is being used with a work table in in front of it, notice, I want, I want you to notice that table because we, we're, there's, a, there's another magic that you can get after you get concrete, and that's casters. Anytime you can get a table that you can move around, you've got all kinds of uh, opportunities there for things that you couldn't do. But I know, concrete. So the, that gives us a, a use of slat wall. This is the kind of thing that you can show a picture to your local builder or your brother-in-law or somebody and say, build me one of those. I, I need that in, in my store to get more vertical space. So we've got this slat wall back there. Let's see what else we can do as we go around the runway. Here's number four. And we're not going to spend a lot of time on this today because all of many of you know how strongly I feel about this. This is the container garden department. You'll notice it's in front of and adjacent to that vertical space. So you'll notice there are several components to this. There is uh, the, the slat wall that's on, gives me, the, show me the hay racks. After all, that's a container for my container garden department. Anything that you can put a plant in is a container garden department element. So we've got pottery there on shelves so that you can have the pottery right there. We've got the container workstation, which is sort of the central point to it. Uh, let's see what it, what that looks like. Some of you have seen these kinds of uh, constructions before, but you've got a space where you can actually make containers for customers. Um, see, a container is a hole that you pull up out of the ground. But the wonderful thing about the container, and the more expensive they are, the better off you are. If the customer buys a, a plant and puts it in the ground, and it starts to look peakety or it dies, they can throw that thing away and put some mulch down and not have to worry about it. 
if they buy a container, particularly if they invest in something that looks like, uh, that looks like uh, furniture for their deck or their patio, now they've got something that they need to keep fresh. So if you can sell them a container to garden in, then you can sell them that container multiple times. So uh, we've, we've talked about subscription programs for containers. Uh, this is some of the kinds of displays that people have put together. Uh, pallet racking works great. And I've got lots of photographs uh, to share with you if you want to see more of how you can display containers. But once again, they need to be where you can see them. And this is the kind of thing that you can build for yourself uh, using that vertical space that we don't use very often. And then using that space to show off. And you'll notice these are organized by color because that's how she shops. She knows if she wants a blue pot or a white pot because she knows what her deck or her patio looks like. So the customer shops for those containers. The more you can gather those together, and I know that there are those of you out here who want to spread your containers all over the place and, and use them to show things off. And I'm not, I'm not going to argue with you about that. I'm just going to tell you, if you put the containers together in one spot so the customer can shop, you'll sell more. I've seen it happen with as much as 400% increase in container sales when they're grouped together in a way that the customer can shop. Now, that doesn't mean just piling them up on a pallet. That won't sell them but putting them where the customer, again, customer merchandise contact, so I can see them and know what they look like. You'll notice these are upright, not upside down. Um, I, I wouldn't ever want the customer to have to try to flip something over to figure out what it looks like. I mean, you might as well go dress shopping and everything be hung upside down. I, I don't understand how I'm gonna make that work. So getting the pottery so I can actually see it and know what it looks like helps me to visualize it. Remember, the customer knows nothing. If you put all the pots up there upside down, they may think that's how they're, they won't, they'll have to figure out, well, is that really what it looks like? So make sure that you're showing them the product the way it's actually gonna look. Containers in your container department. So here's the other category that can make you really uh, look good. And this is the grab and go department. Um, I recommend three price points in the grab and go department. Uh, I don't recommend that you try to make things real complicated so that if you've got a plant that's got a regular old geranium in it, it's one price. And if you've got a plant that's got a somebody, Martha Washington, I think is the one that somebody quoted to me and said, well, it costs more because it's a Martha Washington. I said, I don't think that consumer is going to be able to tell that's a Martha Washington. She's just going to say, why is this one more expensive? So, or even not ask you. So, Here's the container department uh, with, with other options to it that the customer. Now, you won't make this successful in 30 minutes because the customer has to figure out that you have this. Oh, look at social media. What we can do to show off, look what's new in our grab and go container department. So um, it's a, it, it, as the season progresses too, these grab and go containers are a great way to use up inventory because you can take inventory that maybe has been there that, that might not sell as well still sitting in the four inch and start, uh, start repackaging that inventory into these kinds of containers so that, you can, uh, so that you can liquidate that inventory by putting it in a different kind of container. So um, if, if you don't have a grab and go department, then that's one of those places in the store where you can, you'll notice there's a basket wall right back there behind it. Oh my goodness, this is a container department. It's got all kinds of options. So I can buy a basket and I can buy a container and a pot. So let's go to basket walls. Hey Judy, uh, before, yo. we had a question on containers before we move on from that. Okay. Um, we were asked if you don't have space in your greenhouse or have indoor um, retail, do you suggest putting the containers outside? You, you uh, Is this planted or just empty? Or do I we think this came in before the grab and go. So I think okay. we're, we're okay. talking so, about food. So you can certainly put containers outside. That's that's not that's not impossible, particularly if you're going to have a large inventory. The question when you put them outside is how does the customer access them? Now, if I were going to create a container department outside, the first thing I'd look for is a wall to back it up to an exterior wall to back it up to so that you could start with a vertical display 
Think about the think about the the shoe department at the local department store. They've got a vertical display on the walls, and then they've got shelves and tables that come out from that vertical display, but they don't throw the wall away. And it's amazing how many stores have a vertical wall that they're not. Well, it would, that's a redundancy. Have a wall that they could use for vertical display that they're not really using. So I'd look for a way. If I'm going to put them outside, I'd look for a way to try to get some backdrop to that that would define the space so it doesn't look like you've just got a lot of pots sitting around that the customer can't make sense of. And please, if you can get them off the pallets, please do. Uh, it, it just makes a difference if you can get them off the pallets so the customer can see them in what looks like a retail setting. But yes, you can put containers outside. Now, what you want to do is you want to sell them. You do not want them there next year. Uh, we know about product getting degraded. And so if you get toward the end of the season and you got more containers than you really feel comfortable with, then that's the time to start planting up some fall containers and start pushing these things out the door or offer them as a special product to your landscape customers who might like to have some of these containers. But you don't want to keep those containers too long because they will become degraded in, a, in an outdoor setting. So, yes. So the grab and go is helpful. Now, here's uh, here's here's one of the things that I am most proud of in this industry, and that is looking for a way to get hanging baskets down from over the customer's head. Many of you know that I want on my tombstone. She got rid of the getter downer. So um, so what we want to do here is get as much product so that the customer can reach out and take it on her own instead of having to look at the product up there. This is a basket wall. I wanted to show you what it looks like in the kind of setting that we were laying out for this, uh, for this customer. You'll notice this is right in the middle of the store. It's not up against a wall. It's just a freestanding basket wall. The area back here is production. And they don't really want people back there wandering around in production. So this is the visual that stops the customer. And the, the other thing you can notice here is everything on this wall is hung by color. I cannot tell you how many times I've watched customers come in and scoop up four of the same color and go out the door. Uh, if, if, you, if you get the basket separated out so that the customer has to say, do you have another one of these? Now you're in the mode of having to hunt it. And if you have them all together so that when you put the baskets into the retail space and sometimes you have to retrain your 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 stocking crew about how to do that. But if you if you put them together to start with by color, then you know how many you have of that color. And if you, you know that they're there and there's only one of the white one, then, you know, you don't have another one somewhere around yonder where you've got to wander around all over the place and try to show the customer where it is. You're also not spending your time getting the, the thing down for the customer to say, no, I don't, I don't think I like that one. Can I look at that one? Or no, can I look at that one? Now we've gotten ourselves into the real time consuming element of trying to sell a hanging basket. This sort of investment, and this is just pipe. Um, uh, this is just pipe. Here's one up against, uh, up against the wall of a greenhouse. You'll notice again, it's by color. Uh, it's a, it's a, a, a grouping of plants. And uh, I was in this store on Mother's Day and we were, we were watching what customers were doing. And this is the time when guys come in and just scoop up four because they're going to give the same one to their mom and their Aunt Susie and everybody's going to get the same one so they don't argue about it. So they come in and get all these baskets and go out the door with them. Um, so this is a uh, this is a freestanding basket wall. You'll notice you'll notice the uprights here. There's, there's, and then the pipes, you'll notice that there's irrigation on it. These folks did not want to attach their basket wall to their greenhouse. That's your engineering decision. A lot of stores do hang their basket wall right from, right from the, the, the uprights, right up from the cross pieces of the greenhouse. So uh, you get to decide how that works. But um, uh, we, have, we have had so much success with basket walls. It's one of the things that I'm really, really uh, proud of. And it's easy for you to install it in your store. So basket walls. Now we've gotten to that number six where I told you not to pay any attention to it. You'll notice that both of these items are at the end of an aisle. 
Uh, there's our runway again, and there's the basket wall over here on this side. Uh, and we've got a service corridor here so that we can bring product in. We also have, you'll notice there's a new door here that I put on the drawing to have another service corridor to bring product in from the other greenhouses that are located out here. Um, but this is one of those options that a lot of people don't want to give up space for early in the season, but as the season progresses, it gets to be a really uh, interesting addition to your store and makes the store uh, look more inviting to the customer. But you want to put it somewhere where it'll do you some good. And there are two places where it'll do good. This is uh, at the end of an aisle here. And you'll notice they haven't poured concrete yet, but they've got this aisle, see, and it's a dead end. There's if, if, they, if they load up all these end caps with color, they will have helped themselves. But what we want the customer to do is walk all the way down here. And so what we try to do is give them a reason to do that. So if we take that dead end and we install something down there that they'll want to go see, this is a constructed environmental setting. It's used to display product. It's used to display soil. It's used to, it's, it's, it's changeable so that it can be loaded up with something else. Uh, you can put hanging baskets on it, but they've constructed this in their store. Now, if you want to be really professional about this, if you can come up with a design and you can construct it in more than one place, then it begins to look like a sighted professional thought about it. So this kind of idea is, uh, is often something that, the, that you use only in one place, but if you use the same idea in more than one place, then you've got uh, something that the customer can see. So here is this down at the end of that aisle. That's what it does to change the look of that aisle and cause the customer to want to walk all the way down there. So if we try to put something at the end of the aisle that the customer will go see, Sometimes we just park the forklift down there and nobody's gonna walk down there to look at the forklift. But we try to put something there. Here's, here's the uh, a house front. Uh, uh, many stores construct a, ha a house front and put it in the store so that they can have ch a changeable display. Here's what it looks like down at the end of an aisle. So if you use this stuff, not just to stick somewhere, but to put it where the customer will actually go toward it, then you can, you can direct the customer through the store because they want to see these things. So there's one more. Now here's a fluffy one, isn't it? I mean, somebody's got a lot of cool stuff here that they can put out and show off and do. It doesn't have to be this complicated, but you certainly have the opportunity if you sell items like this, to display them in a way that causes the customer to want to walk toward them or want to walk past other product to see this. Um, it, it gets to be a, an enticement. And in this case, you can see this is an interior display, but you can see how the lighting is muted is uh, back here. And then the lighting is, oh, lighting. Woohoo, let's not go there. Um, so lighting is one of those things that can really direct the customer's attention. Uh, if you're dealing with lighting at all, always remember what's important is where the light goes, not where it comes from. It, we're, it, we're not, I, I have to fight my husband about this all the time because he likes you know, fancy light fixtures. I don't care what, it, what the light fixture looks like. I care where the light goes. And that's very much the case in retail is where can you get the light to go uh, to, to show off something. So we can simplify this. It doesn't have to be this complicated. There are other ideas, but there's how you could put something down at the end of an aisle so that the customer can see that there's something down there to go, you know, to go look at. So we're trying to get them to walk the store. So we can come up with some other ideas. Here's, a, here's a, a patio setting. This is actually a built space that can be changed out very quickly. Nothing there is planted. Everything is a container. And the nice part about this is those white chairs can be changed out to red chairs and you've got a whole different, uh, you've got a whole different look for this. So anything that you can change out quickly is worth the doing. And I see people in a lot of stores, I see them build spaces like this, maybe to show off pavers or to show off something that they do, maybe to show off their landscape services. But this can also be used as an enticement inside the store. So think about where you put these things, either inside or outside, to entice the customer down to the end of the aisle. So there's there's a, 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 a patio installation down at the end of that aisle so that I can go and look at it and, and see what, you know, what's there. Uh, 
Well, all we're doing here is thinking about where to put things in the store so that they serve our purpose to move the customer through the store. I think you can see from these, if we, if we think about where we started, where we started with that, that wall that, uh, that, uh, at the entrance to the store, many of these ideas could be used in that entrance space as well to show the customer and to be able to change out. Now, if you set one of these up, now you've got a gorgeous photograph to put up on your social media. And you're not putting up some kind of stock photo that the customer sees and, and they don't relate it to your store. If you can set up a space like this, and this is actually a proven winner's uh, idea that came out one of, out of one of the early Garden Ideas book. Um, we took this idea and took it to uh, the Ohio Trade Show several years ago, and we changed out. We put the chairs in there and we put the little, you know, the little stuff to create it. And we changed it out every night. We had a different color every day at the trade show. That that was that was one of the most fun projects that that we did. But it's just easy for you to put this kind of thing down at the end. Now, if you if you want to if you want to really give yourself some some uh, some help with this, you can use a printed backdrop, a, a banner backdrop, and then begin to put your three dimensional items in front of it. So anytime you can put up a, a printed backdrop that allows you to set those printed items, then that backdrop becomes something you can use over and over and over again in the store. So if you had a spring backdrop and you had a fall backdrop, you could change this out two or three times and be able to show the customer in the store, either at the entrance or down at the end of an aisle. And then you've got literally a photo gallery to put up on your on your uh, social media. So I, I always worry when people use stock photos uh, on their social media, and as nice as they are, and then the customer comes to the store and that's not what they see. So if you can put a, a something in your store that then becomes part of your social media, now you've got something you can you can really use on all kinds of levels, and it's uh, and it's worth just the um, just the um, the effort to do that because you can use it over and over again. So environmental settings are one of the ways that you can uh, do something. And all along the way, and I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to throw out some of this to, to Jessica and to Megan to, because this is, this is, this is a proven winner's forte all along the way, consistent signage. Consistency in your signage is, is, is the greatest objective you can get to so that it all looks the same. It's the same size, it's the same configuration throughout the store. And you have a way of showing that signage and, uh, and changing it out quickly. So all along the way, along this runway is the consistent signage. There's lots of different ways to do it. Let's look at some, uh, at some uh, department signs. Here's a, here's a classic one. I always like to point out people read from top to bottom, they don't read from bottom to top. We're we're we do it that way, um, and this typeface is very readable. It's not fancy. Um, you can read it. You can see it. You can see it from across the garden. The dark background with the white letters on it is very effective. Uh, I've got a yellow flower on here, but you never want to use yellow uh, in your in your signage. And for goodness sakes, don't use red if you're going to do banners because it will fade, and then you'll have pink. So uh, a, a lot of a lot of this is and these are reusable. Now, that means you have to take them down and put them away. Um, not many stores have a signed storage area. But if you're going to spend money on signage, then creating a place to store it is it, it was one of the things that I accomplished for East Coast Garden Center years ago that they still sing my praises for um, because I created a signed storage area for them that was easy to use. So. You'll notice that the bench signs are all the same. They're readable. Uh, they've, they've got the, the store's logo. Notice back here, here's another, uh, back here behind the little grass sign, there's another uh, department sign back here that shows, uh, that shows what's back in that, in that area. So you want a consistent signage. Whatever it is, let's try, to, let's try to design something you're gonna be able to use all the way through the store. So let's look at some other options. Um, here's, the, here's the Proven Winners uh, inspirational signage that can just light up uh, your, your greenhouse. Notice again, the bench signs are all the same size. The banners are all the same size. 
They're mounted on the post using little flag mounting things that you can buy at the hardware store. The only difficulty with this signage is it requires a ladder. So once it gets up there uh, and you want to maintain it and you don't want it to stay up there and just go to pieces or be out of season, somebody's going to have to get a ladder and take it down. And so that's one of the elements that you want to that you want to do is you want to think about not only how you're going to get your signage up, but how are you going to maintain it? Where are you going to put it when you're not using it? And how are you going to get it up and down? Who's going to do that? So um, nothing is more kind of ooh, than uh, in, in the middle of fall sales. There's a sign up that says um, plant your seeds now. You kind of go, ooh, wait a minute. <laughs> That, that throws credibility right out the window, doesn't it? So, so getting signs up and getting them down easily is a very important uh, way to do it. We're going to show you some other options here for how you, how you can do that. Uh, Judy? And, yeah. Um, I had a question actually from yep. our friend Leanne Ruggio. Um, oh. who's was asking if, <laughs> if the letters should be sideways or upside down on signs like that. They should be sideways. Sideways are up and down, not upside down. They, they, up should, down. <laughs> they should be sideways. We don't we don't read over and under. And I know if you you see all these banners that are out there in front of the barbecue joint where the letters are over and under, we don't. Old English teacher here. <laughs> credibility, credibility. Um, we read from top to bottom, and we don't read the letters over and under. Uh, particularly if it's a long word, we, we have to figure it out. But if the letters are are done sideways, now now this one you see works nicely because there's room to put it on there horizontally. But if you're going to use the vertical, then you want the letters turned on the side because that's how we can re that's how we read them. You, you don't. It's interesting. Humans don't have to turn their head to read it. The brain goes Toom, and just reads it uh, all on its own. So, uh, but they but we don't read over and under letters as well. Even stop signs don't over and under. So we've talked about dead ends. Uh, here's a wonderful entrance aisle in this store, but I want you to notice down at the end of that aisle, there's just a bunch of greenery. Uh, that's that's not what I'd put there. That's not enticing for me to get down there and, and want to walk all the way through the store. So, so one of the things that we can do with signage is we can use it to entice people down a walkway and see something that they might not walk down there to look at. Remember, since we were four years old, feet follow eyes and we'll go look at it. If it's colorful and attractive, we'll walk down there. You have to, in, in, this, in doing this, you have to pay attention to your sight lines because if this is, if I'm standing right here and I can't see this, then I've just flushed my signage right down the toilet. So if you get it too high or too low, or if it's behind something, or if I can't see it, and that means you have to walk the store. So, uh, which is why, and we're gonna, take a look at this in, on our runway again before we leave today, but which is why you want to try to determine in advance where you're going to put signs and what are they going to say. And for those of you who have not read uh, Why We Buy uh, in all these years that I've been suggesting you read it, the best chapter on signs in all the world is in Why We Buy. And uh, it addresses the issue of where the sign goes and what's on it that at the right time for the customer to stop and read it. Because um, we, 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 we can do a lot more with signage than just stick it up there and hope that it does something. Because it is expensive, so uh, which is another reason why you want to store it. Now, here is uh, a, a, a walkway that goes to the next state. Uh, this is one of those long uh, pathways that goes along the side of a uh, tree and shrub area in a big retail garden center. And you'll notice there's even some signage here, but it's, but it's up there. Uh, and, and, and what we see is we see this hole down here at the end and we kind of go, oh, I'm not sure I'm, if I'm going to walk down there or not. So what we want to do is try to break that space up so the customer does want to walk down there. So now we've got our signage. Notice how the signage is on the post. And this can be done with wraparounds or it can be done with, uh, with banners if you choose. But here's the signage on the post. There's another one. There's another one. There's another one. This is my slowdown. So that as I walk into this space, I stop there to see, oh, what is all this? Now look what's to the right. There's my, oh, look. And that's what it looks like as you walk past it. So 
You've got a, 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 a sign here that slows the customer down. You've got a display unit here that sh slows the customer down. But you've also got, back it up one time, Jess, and let's look at that, that walkway again. But you've also got an enticement to take the customer all the way down that, uh, that walkway. Now, this signage is custom made for that store. The only way you can justify that is that you take it down and you put it away and you bring it back out the next year. That's, that's how you get the dollars out of the signage. That's true of any kind of signage that you get from Proven Winners or from the local sign shop. Making that signage useful year after year is part of what you want to be sure you can do. So this is, this is one element of consistent signage. Uh, let's look at that, at that, oh look again, Jess. Um, so, you, so you move through and you see these spots where the customer says, oh, and so they go and, and look at that product and you've, you've slowed them down, but you also continuing to get them to move down that aisle. So that's one of the things that signage does for us. Let's go back to consistency for just a minute. Here is uh, a beautiful sign display. I think this one might have won an award for a, for a destination store several years ago. It's beautiful, but it's also difficult to maintain. I mean, it's difficult to, to keep that looking that good over a period of time and to keep the pink stuff in the right place and the purple stuff in the right place. It's difficult to maintain it. And what happens if it's difficult to maintain is it doesn't get maintained. You get too busy, you don't have time, you've got other things to do and all of this suffers. So let's look at how we can make it easier to maintain. Uh, my go-to sign, system right now is this. Uh, this is consistent, it's replicable, it uses PVC pipe and zip ties. And the, the way the sign is put together, the base has either sand or, uh, or, or uh, rebar to give it stability. It, it's designed so it can sit on the floor or up on a table and uh, it comes apart. The bottom half, the, the, the part that, that is the cross piece that holds it up, the base, comes off. You, everything else is glued. All of, this, all of this is glued together, but all of that is flat. Down here where the cross pieces go in the opposite direction, that's not glued. It comes off and you can store it. So uh, this is my go-to. Uh, it, it is not fancy, but if you want to get signage in your store, and I want you to notice it's 24 by 36. It's a standard size, an economical size for you to use to buy a chloroplast sign or a, uh, or a banner sign. And uh, it works a w in a way that, that gives the store a look of consistency all the way through. And remember, the customer shops in places where the signage is all the, all the same. Target has the same signage. CVS has the same signage. So they use a consistency that when we start using that consistency elevates our retail presentation immediately. Here's another one. This is, this is a lovely uh, signs made out, of, uh, made out of pipe again with a metal hanger. And these folks just print their signs and use magnets to put them up there and they can change them out really, really quickly. Uh, this one is a little heavier than the PVC but it has that certain look to it that, uh, that I think is, is very attractive. Um, and it can be moved. Again, it can sit on the ground or it can sit on, on the table. So we're looking for something that we can do over and over and over again, and we can change it quickly. You don't need a ladder to do any of this stuff. And here's how it looks in a department. This is a, a wooden version of that same sign holder that I showed you in, in, the, in the pipe and in the PVC. It's a wooden version. It uses uh, 24 by 36 signage. It can sit on a table or on the, on the ground. Uh, it is uh, heavier. It's the only, only downside to it. Uh, but these guys have uh, dozens of landscape people wandering around. So if somebody needs a sign move, they can say, take that over there for me. Um, but the weight of the sign is something that will make a difference to your staff in getting it put up, getting it taken down. The zip ties are magic because when you're done with it, you take the, you take the sign out, you go store it, and you, and you put up a, a new piece with new zip ties. So we, uh, we discovered in this, in this department, this, this um, uh, shrub department, that 
that we needed we needed basically a lot of generic signs that talked about color. They didn't talk about all the specific varieties, but that had other options to them. So Proven Winners has done a really good job coming up with signs that you can use over and over and over again to create a look like this. So this was a, a destination of Proven Winners uh, shrubs, and these folks expanded it the next year. So they started with this and then they added to it and you'll notice it's got the structure there. It's also located at the end of an aisle. So, you, so the customer coming through the front door can see this, can see all of this from the, from the front door. So it's, it's very visible and it's very much an enticement. So uh, again, it's consistent and replicable and, um, and you, can, you can use this kind of thing and you don't have to do it all at once. You don't have to go out and build 25 or 30 sign holders. You could start with one department, put together the department you want to have the most impact on, and then the next season you can come back and add uh, another set. Once you've got a design that you can replicate um, and you wanna make sure that no matter who builds them, they build them exactly the same way so that you can use the same sizes and all that. So this is one of those things that, that Proven Winners has been good at for a long time. Uh, I bet some of y'all in this group remember when the only sign you had was a poster that showed every daylily variety in the world and you had it stuck to the back of your door. I mean, there was no such thing. Uh, and so now we've come a long, long way. Thank goodness. Now that we've got all these young gardeners who don't know anything, thank goodness we've got the ability to put signs in front of them. So we can, uh, we can let help them to make choices with these silent sellers. So, uh, you want consistency. And at the end of this runway, you want cash wraps for add on sales. So let's go back and look at cash wraps for just a minute. Uh, these are two absolutely perfect cash wraps. Uh, the, the, the products, the do you need products are on the end cap leading up to the cash wrap. There's nothing there that the customer has to make a decision about. Notice there's only, there's only one spinner there that's got some gloves on it. So either she wants paired gloves off that or she doesn't. Uh, here's one, one showing of, uh, of, uh, some kind of plant food or whatever it is that they've got there. I don't know what these red bottles are, but a bit it's something somebody needs. And then there's a, there's a, a display here. So you've got one, two, three, four products on this end cap. And they don't require anybody to make a decision. Now, this end cap could have some, some nice uh, house plants on it if you wanted to. But remember, I showed you the entrance to this store right over there just over there. This is the entrance to that store that I, I showed you the, the beautiful concrete. This is the entrance. Right over here is where those houseplants are. So if I'm coming toward the register, I'm gonna see those houseplants a second time. But keeping the register with just products that the customer can make a real simple decision about so that they're not standing there reading anything. Don't put anything close to the register that somebody's got to stop and read the package and figure out if they want the red one or the blue one or the big one or the little, make all those decisions for them. So here is a design for a cash wrap. This is one that uh, I designed my, for, for, for customers. Uh, this is uh, shelving. Uh, as you come up to the register, this shelving is here for product. This store wanted a three shelf. They, they built it themselves. They wanted a three shelf. You can also install slat wall here and have more options if you choose, but this is what they wanted. Here are the cash registers back here. There are two of them. The customer comes to this side or to this side to check out. So here's where my product is here that I want to place for the customer to be able to pick up as they come toward the register. Now, uh, it, could, it could be cute things too. I mean, I'd put orchids here on Mother's Day for somebody to pick up a, a 1995 orchid, but only put two colors. Don't give them 15 kinds of orchids to have to select from. So this is your do you need department at the register and you want it to be there because the only thing you want on the register top is the customer's products that she's buying and her pocketbook. So we get our register counters all you know covered up. Here's, here's where the customer's pocketbook and her product goes. Here's where the customer's pocketbook and her product goes. That end cap is back there. Now this one actually has a cover on it and, and I can show you how to do that. This is a wrap station. 
So that if you got to package something or you've got to put a bow on something, this is where all your wrap station materials go so that the customer can check out. Everything goes over here and somebody else can be doing that while, while the customer is out of the checkout line. So that's what this is for. This is a three-part system. Now, for those of you who are on this call, I have a set of plans for this that I'd be happy to send you for free if you want to see what this kind of U-shaped uh, configuration looks like. Um, and, and then you can decide that you're going to build it exactly how you want it. Um, but here's a configuration that has worked for a lot of people. And um, you all, all of you know that I'm a big believer that all the cash registers ought to be in one place. So we, we get out of some of this problem of having cash registers in more than one location in the store because that's a can of worms that really can get to be difficult. So cash wraps is where you want to end up at. That's, that's where you want to be. And you want those registers uh, clear. Uh, don't tape something to it that I'm supposed to read because I'm not going to read it. I I'm not going to read anything. Uh, you only want the information there that I need in order to pay you because that's the only thing that's supposed to happen there. If you have specialty order items that somebody needs to order a yard of mulch or they need to order a, a piece of furniture or whatever, that happens somewhere else. So if you're going to have those products that the customer needs to place an order for, that has to happen at a service counter and you can decide that you're going to put one. So here's our, here, we're back to our runway uh, here in the, in the, here's our, here's our, our, our enticement wall, our, our show off wall here. Here's our carts. We've got two environmental settings, both of them at the end of an aisle. Uh, we've got our container department back here with pottery and hay racks and, and a workstation and, and a grab and go something. We've got our basket wall here that serves as a back wall to the retail. And we've got our runway that takes the customer all the way around and back to here. And here's my register. You'll notice I've got some more slat wall here. This is a great place to put, uh, put tools or anything that I need to pick up that there's not room enough for on the, on the end cap. You can also put a, a table in here, if, uh, particularly if you can put it on casters, that you can put other items that I might want to pick up like orchids or houseplants or a succulent. So, uh, so you got space here. Notice how much open space there is behind this register. Uh, nobody likes that. I can't give up that much space. I can't do it. The customer is there to get through the register. They've already shopped. Now they just want to pay and leave. Give the customer some room. Let them have space so that they're not standing on top of one another. If you've got customers who are saying, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, you got a cash wrap congestion issue. And they don't like it. You know, they, they don't like to be in those congested areas. So give them, give them some room so that they can, so that they can shop. Um, I say that uh, my clock says we've got eight minutes uh, here. Uh, Jessica, you want to, you want to end this thing up. Um, one more offer for you, uh, for those of you who are on this call. Uh, if you would like to include your entire staff in this particular training program, I can tell you this Zoom thing works really well. It, it, you don't have to be a technical expert to make this thing work. Um, so if, if any of you want to do this and do it as a live version and ha have me conduct this program for your staff and talk to them about your particular store, I'm happy to do that at no charge. So if you let me know you want to do this as a staff training program, then then I'll set up a time and work with you on that. Um, we can we can figure out how you want to do it. We can do it uh, any a lot of different ways, long distance. But the thing that I find interesting about this is it's live person to live person. So uh, you, you get a chance to stop and talk. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jess. Thanks, Megan. It's your airplane. Well, actually, it's still yours for a minute because we had a couple questions come okay. in. Um, in um, one person asked in one of the slides, and Judy, I believe she's probably talking about the picture from um, East Coast with, with right. the wooden signs. Right. Um, she was asking about the signs, the first signs blocking um, the following signs or the other tables. And if there's ever concern that you lose a wow factor um, by people just kind of seeing signs when they walk in the door. I think you can oversign anything. I, I think you can, I mean, you can get too much in there and people don't pay any attention to them. Uh, 
But because of this, the way this department was set up, we wanted we wanted it to look consistent. So uh, I think there are six islands in that mm -hmm. display space. So those six islands were set up to have two products on each island. That, that's how they were done. So there's only 12 plants in that display. Uh, we didn't try to show them everything we had. We tried to show them the very best of what we had. And we tried to time this stuff so we could keep bringing things in that were in color. Uh, what happens in this space is once the customer arrives at that spot, and, and if you notice, if you think about that photograph, you come up to this space on the corner. That's, that's how the walkway comes up the space on the corner. So the, from the spot that I shot that picture, that's where the customer walks up to this display space. So what we were showing them is one sign on each of those six tables that would cause them to want to walk from one to the next. And then each table had one bench sign for each variety. So that's what we were trying to control. Uh, where we get into trouble is when we've got 25 different kinds of products on a table and we're trying to put a sign up there for every one of them. And that's when it gets to be verbal diarrhea and I don't, want, I don't look at it. Um, but if you can use the signs so that you can create a consistency throughout a department and you've thought about where you're gonna put them, then you don't have that problem of the, of the signs getting in each other's way. And we watched uh, customers move through this space. We stood there and, and watched uh, a, a lot with people moving through this space. And if the sign and the product matched, the customer stopped and stood there longer. If the sign, and we even had some issues, Jessica remembers this, we had some issues where we had some signage that we didn't have product to show the customer. So, so we were immediately trying to get away from varieties and show shade or, uh, or plants for sun or we were trying, but if there is a sign that makes sense to the customer, if, it, if it's there in front of them and it gives them information they think they can use, they'll spend more time standing there in front of the product. And that's what we want them to do. Great. Um, another question. The key there though, Jessica is, uh, Megan, is that we limited the product. We, we, we right. limited the amount of product in the space so that we didn't have to oversign it. So that's backing up the inventory is how we manage that. Right. Yeah. Um, another question asking, um, how about using outside checkout on sunny days? Well, um, I, I know people, I know people do that. Uh, there are lots of problems with checkouts in two places, no matter where they are. Uh, the question about outside checkouts on sunny days is, are you allow, is the customer shopping the whole store or are you allowing the customer to come into your beautiful display of annuals, buy their annuals, come to that register and never see anything else in the store. And see my, as you can see from the runway that we were looking at in this configuration, I want the customer to shop the whole store. I, I, I want it to be easy for them to do that. I don't want them to have to go around their elbow to do it. But if you, if you let the customer shop only at the front half of the store, at some point they're gonna come in and say, oh my goodness, I never knew you had roses or I never knew you had. Uh, you want them to see as much product as possible. So the, the, the key is to get that site plan out and figure out where do you want them to go so that you can bring them into one spot and bring them out another and then make enough room. And it's possible all the registers could be outside. You, you, you could decide you're going to create a structure that has you know, roll up sides or something and put all the registers outside so that you could use them uh, on days, you could close them down if you wanted to, if the weather was bad. A lot of that has to do with the seasonality of what you're selling. Some people sell year round, but the key is how do I get the customer to see the whole store and not just let them shop the front 25% and never see anything else. And that's the danger early in the spring because we put all those fabulous annuals out there. We put a register out there and the customer only shops that part of the store and they leave. And if, if you remember that a lot of these spring customers, some of them don't come back to the store later in the year. 
Um, and we don't want that to happen. As long as we have product, we want them to know that they can come to the store and find something that they want. So as the season progresses and you have fewer, less product outside and you need that register less, those customers that only shop that front part, they may think you don't have anything. So, uh, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in the first objective is to find a place to put the register so it can be there year round and to have at least two of them. I, I, I do not, don't ever build a register with just one line to it. Build two, which is why my plan is designed the way it is, so that you have two to start with. Doesn't mean you have to use them, but you have two to start with. And there are gonna be days when you're gonna need them, you hope. If you don't need them, you're in trouble. So that's what you wanna do. But I'm a big believer in putting the register in one place. We had two questions actually came in and I think you can probably answer them. Um, they're, they're pretty similar. Um, and they're asking about COVID and how that changes space for customers and best practices um, given the climate that we're in right now. Okay. Um, I'm 71 years old. I get my last vaccine this afternoon. I will be grateful for that. But I'll be wearing that mask until Dr. Fauci tells me to take it off. As our wonderful mayor here in Savannah has said to us, keep the faith, but listen to the science. And you want to make your customers comfortable, but you want to keep everybody safe. And I think this is a white hat issue. Um, I can tell you there have been times when I have left a store because it was, there were too many people in there. So um, uh, it, many, many people are aware of this, particularly if you have elderly customers. Now, I realize that there is a part of this country that doesn't put much faith in the science. I can't help that. Um, I have to be, I have to be care, I have to be concerned about the health of my staff and the health of my customers. So uh, uh, you will have to make your own choices. But the last thing in the world you want to do is to have somebody coming to your store trying to do a contact trace. You, you don't want that at all. That's the worst possible consequence um, is that there is an outbreak and somehow it has something to do with your store. That that just, that I, I lie awake at night about that. I used to lie awake worrying about little kids getting closed up in hot greenhouses because somebody didn't secure the door and some kid got in there and couldn't get out. I used to worry about that. I still worry about that. But the health of your staff and the possibility of something being bad, uh, I, I, I've lived my life, all my life, with the question of what is the worst possible consequence and can you live with it? And if the worst possible consequence is that either a customer or a staff member at your store gets sick, I don't think, I, I don't think I'd want to live with that. So I think all the precautions are well done. Now you have outside sales, people can be outside, but I think you should uh, encourage them to keep the faith and follow the science. And right now the science is clean hands, mask, social distancing. That doesn't seem to me like brain surgery. So I feel very strongly about it and about the health of the people that I'm around. Um, I'm going to I'm going to travel for the first time in April. I'm going to see a store. Uh, they have asked me very uh, very much, and we've all agreed we're going to follow all the best practices. So I think the worst possible consequence is that somebody gets sick. And you don't want that. So, end of message. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Nope, that's a great message. <laughs> All right. And actually, I am just going to take two minutes of, of your time if you guys can hang with us. Um, I just actually wanted to talk about a couple things um, that really tie into a lot of what Judy was saying today. Um, as we're talking about signage, um, 
we just wanted to make you aware that we have a, a really extensive um, ready to go POP section of our website. Um, the link is up there. We'll, uh, we're also gonna be sending you guys a recording um, of this in a few days and all these links will be actionable for you so you don't have to try to jot this all down right now. But um, that in this library, a lot of these um, graphics that have been really, really successful for us, we've made those available so you can go online order those, they go through our printer, they get to you really, really quickly. Um, so if you're if you're still trying to make some decisions about a sign, and to Judy's point, there's a lot of ways to be consistent in your sign size and style um, through the POP store. And, and Jess and I um, can also help you if you need help navigating some of that. Um, there's a lot in there, so sometimes it can get a little bit overwhelming, but if you've got some specific needs, um, as we're getting closer to the kickoff of the season, um, that's a great resource for you if you're kind of looking to try to sign things quickly. Um, and then just again on that next slide, Jess, um, we also want to point out um, our Connect Plus program, it's still available for sign up. Um, and with that, at the basic enhanced and elite levels, there is POP credit in, with that. Um, so if you are looking to do some signage um, at that POP store, you're going to get a coupon, you can apply that to um, the signs that you purchase, you can apply your professional stored merchandise credit. So again, another way that you can kind of tie Connect Plus in and a lot of other benefits that come with the program. So if you haven't looked at that um, closely, that might be a good option for you and a good way if you're feeling a little overwhelmed by where you're at on the marketing side as, as we're getting into the season. Um, there's some ways that with this program, we can really help take some of that stress off you and, and give you some things that are ready-made and, and, and good to go as far as social media graphics and campaigns. And again, tie in some signage opportunities as well. And then finally, we just want to remind you um, that the Proven Winner Certification is now online. It is up and live as of February 1st. Um, so our certification program is really there to um, help train your, you and your staff on new Proven Winners varieties on the programs, um, give you access to additional learning content like Proven Uni Winners University, um, and also very importantly, make sure that you have an enhanced actionable retailer locator on our website. We have a lot of traffic that goes to there looking for proven winners retailers. So that part's really important as well. Um, and also access to um, photo library and our IGC drive. So there's a lot that comes with certification. Um, the program runs through May 1st um, so that you can get all these goodies and get the pizza party and, and the t-shirts and the prizes that come along with certifying. That link is up there as well. If you have any questions, Jessica and I are happy to answer those for you. Um, and our contact information is right there. So really easy emails, Jessica at Proven Winners and Megan at Proven Winners. Um, you see our, our little territories there, but um, we're always happy to help. So if you don't know which one of us to reach out to based on this real quick flash, um, you know, we'll, we'll definitely both work together to help you and point you in the right direction. Um, we know it's a crazy time, it's getting busy, it's getting exciting. Um, and what we're here to do is, is help you guys with that. So um, I won't keep you any longer because I know you need to get back to things, but we just want to say thank you to Judy. That was great information um, as always. And thank you to Jessica as well. And, and please reach out with any questions. And again, we can't thank you enough for the support of Proven Winners and the attendance and the interaction that you have all had on this webinar. It's been fantastic to be able to reach you in, in some capacity during this time. And we just really appreciate it. So um, with that, have a great day.